So great news, it looks like nuclear is back on the menu and this is especially important today because today, 81 years ago, on December 2nd, 1942, the Chicago Pile started a self-sustaining nuclear reaction. And one thing that is notable about this Chicago Pile is that this reactor was developed by Enrico Fermi. He was the person who was in charge of the experiment to get this nuclear reactor running. So, and today we may have witnessed another watershed moment for nuclear power, but this time in the 21st century, as 22 countries pledge to triple nuclear capacity in the world by 2050. Now it is very important to recognize that this COP, this gathering of all these countries is being organized by the United Arab Emirates this year. And this is special because the United Arab Emirates have shown that even if you have zero experience in nuclear, you can still do a successful nuclear program. Now, this pledge is basically being spearheaded by the United States. And what is also very, very special about this is that at previous COPs, now the, the previous COP was uh, already somewhat slightly more pro-nuclear than the ones before. Before, most COPs, most gatherings, they basically didn't talk about nuclear. Now, the other weird thing is that Belgium was there. Now, I, I don't believe that Belgium has actually pledged to triple their nuclear capacity by 2050, but they were there. They were active participants in this whole event. And the weird thing is that Belgium, by law, cannot have any nuclear anymore beyond, beyond 2025. And they're right now in the process of closing perfectly fine nuclear reactors. And even the two reactors that have the supposed fractures, which are not fractures at all, and which Oak Ridge National Laboratory has said uh, are safe to operate, you know, uh, for as long as, as as you want um, they have already been closed and they're still planning to close another three reactors maybe two they can prolong beyond 2025 however the law says it can't so I don't know exactly how the Belgian Belgian people are going to square this um, but it's also weird because there's something else um, yesterday, a member of the Open VLD party, which is the party of Alexander de Croo, he basically said that nuclear is going to be a part of Belgium's future way up until 2050. And to me, that is uh, strange because this party has campaigned for the closure of all their nuclear power plants and got into power. Be not 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 because of that that promise, but because because of that promise, they could work together with the Greens and Ecola, which are parties that wanted to close the nuclear power plants. So this is a a, a slightly uh, weird thing that is happening right now, and I understand why this is happening right now because Open VLD isn't a really anti-nuclear party. Green and Ecola are. Uh, so Open VLD is right now basically scratching their head and they're thinking, well, you know, we're in this coalition with these Greens, and, and we still can't exactly, you know, start. Um, uh, debating this stuff amongst ourselves because this might en end our government essentially and, and, and we need to uh, go back, elect a new government which then throws everything up in the air which we have done so far that is not related to nuclear of which they are probably proud. Now, I'm Dutch, so I mean, this is Belgian politics. I will leave the politics up to them. But I do believe that the inclusion of the Crow right now at this moment, at this pledge in Dubai, is basically to help uh, Belgium uh, help the government overcome the Greens and overcome the Ecolo stuff and basically uh, give them the confidence that if they uh, if they manage to eliminate this law that is going to end nuclear by 2025, that then they can end perhaps save all the nuclear reactors and also uh, start considering building new ones. Let's go back to the text and, and let's see what we can learn from it. The key takeaways uh, is basically they start by saying, okay, that we recognize that nuclear energy has a vital role uh, to play if we want to limit our uh, temperature rise to one and a half degrees. Also, they say that nuclear has a has an essential role in monitoring the climate because, because of nuclear science, because we use nuclear science everywhere in factories, but also in measuring stuff, you know, measuring, for instance, particles in the air, measuring temperature. Uh, there's, there's loads of applications for nuclear science uh, that are not just related to power production that uh, basically influence uh, the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we continue. Uh, they say tripling nuclear capacity is needed to ensure one and a half degrees. Then they stress that it's incredibly important that we start thinking about how we can finance this required tripling of nuclear capacity. And they also state that nuclear energy can help decarbonize other industries that currently basically are not considering nuclear. Uh, one of which is obviously the fossil fuel industry, because if we want to have hydrogen, if we want to have synthetic fuels, then you need a 
very stable power source, a very strong power source, which is available all the time, which makes sure that we don't have to overpay for this synthetic fuel, which makes it more affordable for everyone. And then there's one thing that I marked in red, and it says recognizing analyses showing that decreasing nuclear power hinders reaching net zero as per the international energy agency. Now, this is something I think has been put in there, especially because of Belgium, uh, because of Germany and because of Austria. I mean, these are the three countries that really have uh, a bone to pick with nuclear. You can see you can see that Belgium is right now basically pulling back from that idea. They are saying, OK, listen, uh, getting rid of nuclear may not be a good idea because they wanted to offset that with gas. They can't build their gas plants because ministers are basically blocking the issuance of licenses to get that done. But also in Germany, the CDU party is now basically saying, okay, the atom exit may not be a good idea and maybe we need to return to nuclear in order to ensure that our economy can keep running because right now minister Habeck is actually issuing subsidies to German industries in order to keep them in Germany because the prices for their electricity the power that they need to produce their products is going up so high that they're right now considering basically first stopping production and just letting things run out see whether they can restart it but probably most probably and these industries are, are, are going to say okay let's in Germany, the way this is going, the, the fact that we don't get a stable supply anymore, uh, the fact that you keep burning coal and that you're adding gas, it's just untenable for us. So we basically are going to say goodbye to Germany and uh, we are going to take our business elsewhere. And this is something that is really happening everywhere. The only exception right now is Sweden, but you can see it in the UK with the steel industry. You can see it in the Netherlands with the steel industry. You can see it in Germany, the car manufacturers and other manufacturers that are basically saying, listen, this is, this is really unsustainable for us. We can't put a competitive product on the market with these energy prices. So this is very important about this pledge. If you pledge yourself to this document and you say, okay, we recognize the analyses showing that decreasing nuclear power hinders reaching net zero, you're basically telling Germany, you're fools to try this. Now, the last country is Austria. They even have a nuclear power plant, which is called Zwentendorf. And Zwentendorf was never put on. It was, I believe it wasn't even ever fueled. It was finished. And then they had a referendum. And then the Austrians basically said, no, we're never going to use nuclear power. Uh, so that was basically a waste of money. This is a pledge by 22 countries. So this is on a diplomatic level. What do they pledge to do? I'm going to read this. So they commit to supporting the development and construction of nuclear reactors, such as small modular and other advanced reactors for power generation, as well as wider industrial applications for decarbonization, such as hydrogen and synthetic fuel production. So there we are, what we just said uh, a couple of minutes earlier. They, they basically state, listen, this is the most important thing we need to do. We need to wean ourselves of fossil fuels. Electrification can't do that all. We are going to need hydrogen for mainly industrial processes, and we are going to need synthetic fuels to keep our boats floating, to keep our airplanes flying, and probably also uh, to keep a large part of mankind mobile using personal vehicles like cars, scooters, or something else that requires some form of energy input. Then they say these countries pledge to recognize the importance of promoting resilient supply chains, including of fuel for safe and secure technologies, such as nuclear power plants for their full life cycles. Now, this is something very interesting because I made this video a couple of weeks ago where I said stop buying uh, nuclear fuel from Russia and I th I believe that this is an element that touches on that because if you want to have a resilient supply chain right it's it also says including all fuel so it's it's in, in essence at first it's about components and stuff that you need to keep a nuclear power plant operational which is something you need a stable supply to do that because these nuclear reactors they run for 60 70 maybe even 80 years this new can do design that was presented the other day says it has a operational design life of 70 years. So you also need a supply chain that can make sure that these plants can stay operational for the duration of that time. But also if we look at the fuel situation currently, uh, Russia has almost 50% of all the uranium enrichment capabilities in the world. Uh, so, so you really want to start diversifying these capabilities because there's only seven countries in the world that do enrichment. Then they say recognize the importance where technically feasible and economically efficient of extending the lifetimes of nuclear power plants that operate in line with the highest standards of safety, sustainability, security, and non-proliferation as appropriate. Now, like we said just now in Belgium, uh, seven reactors uh, of which 
they are going to lose five if we don't pay attention. Germany still has six nuclear power plants that have just been decommissioned. Now the question is how much destruction has been taken place in these reactors? We don't know. So maybe these six are salvageable. Maybe these six aren't salvageable. But whatever is salvageable, I think that Germany should try to do it. Now the question is whether they will have a new government in place in time to do this. And if not, then Germany should consider building new nuclear power plants. When you pledge to do this, uh, basically the first thing that you pledge is commit to work together to advance global aspirational goal of tripling nuclear energy capacity from 2020 until 2025 by recognizing the different domestic circumstances of each participant because each country plays by its own rules as long as they adhere to certain international rules that were set by stuff like Euratom for instance the Euratom treaty as long as you adhere to those rules each country can do their own nuclear things and then they pledge to committing to take domestic actions to ensure nuclear power plants are operated responsibly and in line with the highest standards of safety, sustainability, security, and non-proliferation, and that fuel waste is responsibly managed for the long term. So basically, again, this means adhere to all the international rules that we've set, that you basically say, okay, uh, we have undersigned this treaty, Eurotom, or something else, uh, which is basically the base set of rules that you, you've been given. Then you commit to mobilize investments in nuclear power, including through innovative financing mechanisms. And this is very important because all these new nuclear vendors that are basically trying to do something new, uh, like the IMSR by, by Terrestrial Energy, for instance, or, or, or if you want to do BWRX 300, or if you want to build this AP 300 by Westinghouse, or if you want to do Oklo, there's dozens and dozens of designs out there that may prove to be something really good for customers and for people who want to do nuclear. But financing just the technology development to get this to a point where you can actually deploy it takes a lot of money. And then, and this is also important because this is basically a step up from the previous pledge is you invite shareholders of the World Bank, institutional financial institutions, and regional development banks to encourage the inclusion of nuclear energy in their organization's energy lending policies as needed, and to actively support nuclear power when they have such a mandate, and encourage regional bodies to have the mandate to do so to consider providing financial support to nuclear energy. Now, this is basically hammering it out, making sure that it even gets imprinted more solidly, that you really need more ways of financing nuclear power because currently nuclear doesn't have for instance the benefits that solar and wind have and solar and wind they get they get subsidized massively when i look at this pledge i'm very happy because it sets out the necessity it tells you exactly why you need to invest in nuclear why you need to uh, consider nuclear from a country perspective why that it is good for your economy why it is good for the climate and it also tells you what you must do in order to make more nuclear deployments possible and and this is very good with this we've come to the end of this video now if you have made it all this way thank you because you help make this channel relevant and because i have not enough watch minutes in the algorithm i basically can't really grow that hard as i want to now if you want to support this tiny pro nuclear channel please consider becoming a member of my patreon page thank you all for watching and have a nice day Bye bye